Hey everybody, Matt Bell with Electric Violin Shop. We're back with the From Classical to Radical series where we're teaching classically trained violinists how to easily enter the world of amplified music. Later in this video, I'm going to show you some easy tricks for quickly finding scale degrees in any key. Uh, it's a really important skill to have for improvisation, and, uh, but first we need to lay a little bit of groundwork. I'm going to introduce you guys to a system of communication that we use in pop music called the Nashville Number System. It can get really involved and really complicated. We're going to stay sort of on the surface right here. When you get on stage for a blues jam and you say, hey, let's do working man blues, the first question is going to be, what key? And you're like, what do you mean, what key? The key that it's in. You know, I play Bach Partita number three, it's an E. Uh, nobody would play it in D because it's not in D, it's an E. Pop and rock and blues is not like that. The reason Jimi Hendrix played Red House and B flat was because that was the key that felt best for his voice that day. Okay, so it's all about the singer. It's really important that you learn that early. Okay, singers can get a little weird too. F sharp could actually feel a whole lot better for a singer than G does. So you're gonna have to play it in F sharp because again, it's all about the singer. Let's talk about the D major scale. Let's say that your singer for Working Man Blues wants to play it in D. So um, D major scale, the notes are gonna appear on the screen here. D, E, F sharp, G, A, B, C sharp, D. Back to D, right? So we're gonna put a number on each one of those scale degrees. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then back to one. Each note has a number depending on the key that you're in. Say we want to talk about F natural, that would be a flat three, because the three is F sharp, right? So that's going to be the flat three. Um, G sharp would be either a sharp four or a flat five, and harmonic rules still apply. And E could be described as either a two or a nine. The D could be either eight or one, and then E would be nine. Um, and that's, that's a concept that we'll get into later, but you will hear people talk about the add nine or, or whatever chord. That's what they mean. So not only does each note have a number, but each chord has a corresponding number. So the one chord in this example would be the D chord. The four chord would be G, the five chord would be A, but with chords we have to know whether it's a major or a minor. So if you see the Arabic number six, that means that we're talking about a B major chord. Okay, if you see a six with a little minus next to it, that means B minor chord. And also if you see it done with a Roman numeral, if it's a capital VI, then that's B major. If it is a lowercase six, then it is a uh, B minor chord. Working Man Blues is a one four one five four one. Okay, that means that tonight you're gonna play D, G, and then D, and then A, and G, and D. But what if tomorrow night you have a different singer, one with a much higher voice, maybe you got a female singer tomorrow night, and she wants to do an A. Well, the numbers still apply. It's still one four one five four one. One four one five four one in A is a D A E D A. So I don't have to learn the song in all 12 keys. The Nashville number system also allows me to translate licks from one key to another. Say I hear a lick that I like, and if I figure out that it's one, three, four, three, four, three, one. I can now do that lick in any key. Um, if we're an E, the number system also allows me to talk theory in a much more generic way. And although pop and rock and blues and country may sound a lot simpler to you than Rachmaninoff, you generally have to know a whole lot of music theory to play a good improv solo in a Brad Paisley song. Um, if you don't know who Brad Paisley is, look him up. Uh, his fiddle player is a guy named Justin Williamson. He's a beast. Uh, really, really enjoyable stuff to listen to. So that's the basics of the Nashville number system. We will get much more in depth in future episodes when we talk about theory and chords and improvising and how to read, write, and play off of Nashville charts. I said that I was going to teach you how to easily find scale degrees um, in any key. In pop music, the most common chords are the one, the four, the five, and the six minor. So you've, you've got to, be, whenever somebody tells you a key, if they say F, you've got to immediately know one is F, and then you've got to know what four, five, and six are because you're going to need those. Then we're going to play F. Second finger on the D string. So I can come up a fifth just coming across strings, right? 
So the five would be C. Come down a whole step is B flat, so that's the four. And go up a whole step from that C, and that's a D, that's your six. So one, five, and then down a whole step is four, up a whole step is six. Um, the other way to think about the four is that it's a fifth down from the root. So the five is a fifth up, and the four is a fifth down, right? You know how that works. So if we're in F, I come up one string, that shows me the five. Come down a string, that shows me the four. Okay? So that's, uh, that's sort of a handy tip if somebody gives you a... Uh, gives you a key that you're not super familiar with. Hey, we're gonna play this in A flat. It's easy to just go up a string, that's a five, go down a string, that's the four. And then of course you know how to find the six, it's just a whole step up from the five. I hope that helps. Be sure to click the subscribe button so that you'll be notified when we put up new episodes. You can hit us up at the shop with any of your electric violin needs. I'm available for Skype lessons if you wanna get a little deeper on some of this and learn how to apply this to your specific situation. So thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.